My name's Carrie Galt. Uh, I'm a registered architect and owner of Happy Box Architecture. We have a small firm that designs everything from new houses to university work, do a little bit of everything. Most architects, I think you'll find that the first question that sort of goes through their head when they get a problem is what they can't do. And I think here what we really focus on is what we can do to solve a problem. And we're very hands-on and it makes us a little more sort of artistic in the way that we go about things as opposed to them just solely being about um, solving a problem. So um, we probably get our hands a lot dirtier than most architects do. This building has a really great little history for me personally. I came to Charlotte to go to school here. This building, this site, generally speaking, was a pretty popular site in school for a couple of different professors for studio projects, mainly because the building sits in a five-point intersection and so it gives you kind of a lot of things to have to deal with as a student. The building was originally a gas station in the 40s. Since then, it has sort of changed hands many times. It was an inspection station when we bought it. When we converted it, we basically took the car bays and made them our primary studio space and took out all of the concrete out front and planted a garden. I'm a painter and a lot of my work involved this sort of idea between above and below and, and there's always sort of a very strong line in them. When we started thinking about what to do on the outside of the building, I wanted it to sort of reflect my paintings. And my mother is an artist and was a production potter my entire childhood. And we've never had a chance to work with each other and we're very close and so it felt like a really great opportunity to be able to collaborate with my mom. My mother's work is very figural with very kind of iconic and mythical creatures and she's very big into animal symbolism. So I was thinking that a lot of her symbolism would sort of look more like a backdrop or a wallpaper sort of behind the, the pieces that I did. What ended up happening is she actually did these really beautiful figural pieces on the wall, the hummingbirds and then their ants and fish and all those were all done for my mom. So they became much more object instead of backdrop and it ended up I'm, I mean, I love it now. It makes me, you know, it makes me happy every time I, I look at it. You know, we'd never done anything like this before, and so figuring out how to make it happen is part of the the kind of fun and challenge of doing it. In essence, what we did was took the small painting that I had done and blew it up to full scale. And we're talking, it's a drawing about that big. <laughs> so we blew it up digitally and printed it out and sort of used that as a, a template to know where the colors would go and where we would put things. And then we laid that out on the floor in our studio and then put a layer of plastic over it and then on top of that put a mesh backing. It's a, it's a fiberglass mesh that you put tile on. All of the tile on the mosaic was salvaged. We got it from vendors. Some of it is old roofing tile. But then the, the basic process once we had the, the sort of infrastructure laid down was it's all broken tile so we basically took them and just wove the colors together based on the, the sort of outline drawing that we had to go with and then glued it all down to the mesh. And since it's impossible to sort of take something that's 18 feet by 7 feet out and just sort of slap it up on the wall, we then um, devised a system where we cut it up into sort of manageable pieces and numbered them and had a sort of template map to go off of so we knew where each piece went. We had the majority of it installed, both the wall and the entryway, within a month. It took us about six months to do it in the studio. Yeah, the, I guess the other main piece of the composition then is the garden. That piece is probably as telling about us as a firm as anything. We are big gardeners and really believe in kind of incorporating landscape um, with architecture. So we pulled all of the concrete up and now the whole garden is sort of its own mosaic. This is, a, you know, the interesting thing about anytime we do anything out here, it's a five-way intersection. There's a lot of pedestrian traffic. There's a lot of car traffic. And so you can very rarely be outside without somebody saying something. And one of the most wonderful things about working on the mosaic was the number of people that would honk their horn or that would stop and would just come by and just their faces would light up and they would just tell us how wonderful it was and how exciting they were to see it and how much they loved it. And people still will pull up and stop and take pictures out in front of it. And um, I think that the neighborhood has really appreciated it and, and clearly a lot of people have expressed their delight with it. So that's been really, that was our objective, you know. This has really opened up a whole kind of new 
line of work for us. We've already been commissioned and uh, completed another one for a private client. We actually did all the tile work in the bathrooms, as well as the design work. The Society of American Mosaic Artists has a meeting every year, and they do a, they have a show, an exhibition, and so we just submitted both the building and this mosaic to their annual exhibition. So for us, that would be a really big, just to even get to participate in that show would be great. I think that this is really something that we've found that, that we love to do and um, will definitely make part of our repertoire in the future.